to The 7000. I'm Andrea and I am really excited to have you here. Before I begin, I want to thank you all for the responses and the views and the comments and just the conversations that happened around the guy version of this video, of this survey, um, which was called, I surveyed church guys to see what they wish girls knew. I just want to thank you guys for the enthusiasm and the participation and after recording that video I realized that it would only be fair to give the guys that took the survey the same kind of insight as we gave the girls into what the opposite gender is thinking. So I surveyed church girls and I got a little bit more responses than I did on the guy episode. I think on the guy episode, I got 16 responses. On this one, I got 20. So yeah, without doing any further, I'm just going to dive into it. Just like the guy version of this one, um, I'm going to give a little bit of statistics into who took this survey because I think it's helpful for you to know if people your age answered this. 30% out of 20 were teenage girls. 30% out of 20 were early to mid 20s. 15% were mid to late 20s, which is my age group. 20% said that they are in their 30s and then one person typed in that they were 30, but I don't know why they didn't just click the 30s option. So a little bit more than 20% were in their 30s just in case you're wondering because i would wonder the same thing if i was watching this i did not take the survey i debated it i was like oh this is my chance to be anonymous um but you know what i already have a microphone and so i wanted to give the voice to the girls that don't in the spirit of this i wanted to keep it as pure of a survey as possible like as scholarly i guess and you're not supposed to give your own opinion when you're making a survey so maybe i just read it a little bit into that too much but also because i'll be commenting on each question i think you guys will already hear enough of my opinions so i just wanted to give the other girls a voice which is why i didn't take the survey okay so the next question where are these girls from and again disclaimer most if not all of the girls that took this survey are romanian christians so there were a couple comments that i got on the guy version of the survey people misunderstood some of my comments so if you are watching this you have to understand that this is coming from a romanian christian community perspective which is a whole different world and community so if you don't understand something and you're outside that community that's probably why because it's like living in a small town even though we live all across the u.s so just keep that in mind all right so 53 percent were from the west 16 percent were from the midwest 22 percent were from the pnw five percent were from the south five percent were from the west coast okay see again why didn't you just click the west option instead of just typing in west coast like i get it <laughs> no one from romania because i deleted two of the responses because i just didn't want to deal with them so that's where everybody is from Alrighty, now we're gonna get into the nitty-gritty the first question is and and by the way the way i created this survey yes this is the girl version of the guy survey from episodes number 25 and 26 but at the same time i wanted to tailor this survey to things that i think that are more applicable to the girls and also i this survey has more questions than the guy survey because some of the questions that got put into this survey are a response to some of the questions or topics that came up as we were discussing the guy answers and so i wanted to give guys a grasp of what the girls think of some of the topics that we talked about because you already know what i think but i want you guys to see that it's just it's not just me that there's a whole community of girls that kind of feels a certain way about certain things and so i wanted to give 
I wanted to make this survey both an equal part of the other survey, but also to go beyond that and to give you guys the answers to what you were looking for. So the first question was, overall, do you think there are enough godly men to marry or do you think the serious girls outnumber the men? The reason I put this question is because a couple, not a couple, a lot of the responses in the guy survey, when I asked them what do they need to grow as a godly man, they're like, oh, we don't have enough single girls our age. There are not enough girls. There are not enough girls. And I was like, are you kidding me right now? Saying there's not enough girls is saying like there's not enough sand on the beach. There are enough girls, okay? There are not enough guys. So overall, do you think there are enough godly men to marry or do you think there are the serious girls outnumber the men. 60% said there are not enough godly men. And in case you don't believe me, watch the episode where I, the men version, there's research done on this within the church. There are a lot more women than men. On an average Sunday, there are 15 million more girls than guys in the church on Sunday morning. I think 15 million. I hope I'm not quoting that wrong. The numbers are pretty unbalanced if you're a single guy the odds are in your favor so yeah just wanted to bring that to your attention 15 percent said that there are enough i think the girls that said that there are enough were the younger crowd um so just keep that in mind because it depends on the age group too and then just like last time there were multiple choice options for people to click but there were also an other option where you can type in your own response so some of the other responses i think it depends on the area or the church which is true some places have more than others but i think overall there's still a lot more girls than guys another one says depends what godly means catholic baptist pentecostal i don't think there are enough godly pentecostal men left (laughs) i don't think it's necessarily that there aren't enough godly pentecostal men left i just think that uh, this is where i get really real come on this is the girl version so i get to be real here i think that pentecostal men don't pursue as intentionally as other denominations they just kind of have this fear and apprehension when it comes to making a move or when it comes to asking a girl out sorry it feels like they're kind of waiting for this lightning bolt to strike or for the girl to make the first move and out of all the denominations i feel like the pentecostal men are the ones that are the most I don't want to say any word that would be insulting, but this is just the word that comes to mind. Timid when it comes to dating or when it comes to just throwing caution to the wind and just kind of making a move. Um, So I don't know if it's necessarily that there are not enough Pentecostal men as um, there are not enough Pentecostal men that are actually actively dating, I think. Oh. I'm just giggling because I don't know how all these comments are going to be received because it was, you know, it was a lot easier to make the guy one because I was talking to guys. And so I knew that guys would agree with what I'm saying. But when you're talking about the girl thing and you're talking about the issues with guys, (laughs) you know, guys got really excited at the guy survey because they're like, oh, yeah, you know, Andrea gets it. And and a lot of the girls are not going to like what Andrea has to say. Well, brace yourselves because I think a lot of you guys are not going to like what us girls have to say in this regard either. I'm going to be just as honest in this one. Okay. The next response says, there are a lot of godly men. Unfortunately, they tend to be overlooked. They tend to have a more quiet personality, different from introverted. Unfortunately, the serious girls don't tend to consider them because those godly guys are not their first choice. Serious girls may not admit it, but they seem to look first at physical appearance instead of characteristics of the man. 
<laughs> I don't know why I get the sense that a guy infiltrated the survey and answered that one. This one, I don't, see if it's a girl, I'm so sorry to, I'm sorry that I assumed you're a guy. But something about this gives me imposter vibes that a guy was like, let me take the girl survey. I don't know. Because I, I definitely got imposters taking the survey and I deleted the responses. But the way they say serious girls may not admit it, but they... If you were a girl taking the survey, would you refer to serious girls as they? <laughs> um, but you know, maybe it is a girl. So let me let me comment on what this actually said. Serious godly men tend to be overlooked because they're more quiet personality. Serious girls don't consider them because these guys are not their first choice. Listen, it doesn't matter who a girl's first choice is because is the and this is where people are gonna throw tomatoes at me it's the guy's responsibility to pursue a woman so most girls will not marry their first choice because if a girl marries her first choice usually it means that the girl liked the guy more and from my observation that doesn't work well for the girl most marriages happen when the guy likes the girl more and kind of wins her over so you not being a girl's first choice should not really be a deterrent. If you're an absolute no, like on her no-no list, then yeah, there's no chance. But if you're like a decent guy on like the same attraction, like physical features level, and you're not her first choice, you definitely have a chance, especially because godly men that are actually pursuing women are nowhere to be found that's why a lot of girls end up marrying dating guys that are that don't believe the same theological beliefs as them why do you think that happens so much it's because guys that actually have their beliefs are not making a move so the girl has to move on and go for the guys that are making the moves so if you're making moves you have a chance i don't think being a girl's not first choice is an issue and i hope that makes sense not that like a girl should have a million options but like just because a girl is not pre-obsessed with you before dating you does not mean you don't have a chance if that makes sense okay and then i want to address this a little bit serious girls may not admit it but they seem to look at physical appearance instead of characteristics of the man it's both don't knock physical appearance altogether because it is important you have to be attracted to your spouse or else how are you going to live with them for the rest of your life if you're not attracted to them in the honeymoon phases of the beginning? But some people come up to me and they're like, Andrea, there aren't really that many options. So I'm afraid that God's going to make me marry somebody that I'm not attracted to. You can stop that fear starting today because God is never going to do that. God's never going to ask you to marry someone that you're unattracted to. It's totally fine. I do agree that there are certain guys that get noticed first because they tend to be model-esque. But those guys... A true serious girl, once she sees that guy's characteristics and personality and character and godliness, it's the halo effect. Don't you worry. Like, it will kick in. If the guy is not living up to godly standards, he will fall from the pedestal just like the rest of them. So I wouldn't be too worried about that. Like, <laughs> there's actually a joke among the women that it's the average looking men that give the biggest heartbreaks. Because those are the ones we tend to fall for the hardest. Not the guys that we thought were super gorgeous at the beginning. It's usually the guys that we kind of just gave a chance to. And then over time, it kind of developed. Um, so that doesn't mean that if she absolutely finds you repulsive that you have a chance. But that means that like, I wouldn't put like, see, this is why I think it's a guy that answered this. Because only a guy would be like, oh, I'm not good looking enough. Because guys are the ones that are so like, they don't understand that us girls, we find a guy attractive based off of his character his character brings his physical attributes to life like most girls even with actors and celebrity crushes they don't really find a celebrity attractive until they see a movie with that celebrity because then it puts a personality to the face and a voice to the face and a character to the face um so yeah i think i spent enough time on this comment so i'm gonna move on serious girls generally outnumber the guys there are a few serious and godly guys, but they aren't leaders. Just good. 
Okay, I'm not certain. I think I know what this comment is trying to say, but I'm not 100% certain. I'm not sure if this comment is saying, yeah, there are good godly guys, but they're not stepping up as spiritual leaders as they should be, which I agree. You should be stepping up as a spiritual leader, even if you don't have a quote unquote spiritual position in the church and a title. You don't need a title to be a spiritual leader. Or this comment could be saying there are good guys, but they just aren't leaders, so they don't get noticed, which can also be true. But once a girl has reached a certain phase in her life, she won't really care about the title that a church gives a guy because she'll realize that sometimes that's just the smokescreen and what matters is the way a guy leads in life and in interpersonal relationships. And then the last one says, I think that there are enough, but the girls are not attracted to them and vice versa. That could be true, but I I still would say that numbers wise, if you were to write all the names of the single Christian women and men on a list and compare it, I think there would be a lot more girls on that list than guys. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next question. Overall, how do you feel about the way the guys treat you? And this was the exact same question that we had for the girls. So just an FYI there. 35% said they treat me well. 35% said they don't choose slash they can't commit to me. The reason I put this answer is because I've spoken to a lot of girls that have had guys lead them on. And everything seems to be going wonderfully. But they kind of notice that the guys get this thing that I talked about a couple times in this podcast which is called the irony of choice or choice overload it's when you walk into an ice cream store and you have so many ice cream samples available that it takes you forever to actually make a choice and so you just go trying sample after sample after sample and after sample and it kind of feels like in the remaining community we girls are like ice cream samples if that makes sense so that's what that is referring to 10 percent said they ignore me And you know what? That is so accurate. Um, I cannot describe how many times it has happened to me where guys will treat me like I'm a brick wall. They'll just walk past and not even not even give eye contact, not even give a little shake of the head. You don't even have to say pacha if that is too much for your dainty voice. just acknowledge the presence it's common decency and it kind of makes you more attractive when you actually acknowledge the people around you and don't treat them like they're not there i've i've even had this happen to me where there was like one specific guy that kind of bothered me because i grew up with him but where whenever i'd run into him at like i wouldn't even see him that often once in a blue moon and I'd be talking to a girl and then this guy would come and talk, like randomly interrupt as if I wasn't even there. My conversation with the girl to talk to her and not even make eye contact. Like I act like I wasn't even there at all. Not that I even really cared for this guy's attention because I genuinely don't. But like it happened to me so often that I at first I didn't notice it. But then after a while I noticed like... This is like the fourth time in a matter of one month where I randomly ran into this person and they interrupted a conversation I was in and acted as if I was asphalt just sitting there on the ground, like didn't even acknowledge. And I tried to like butt in a few comments to see if they would acknowledge my presence. Nothing. (laughs) So don't be like that. Don't treat people like a brick wall and don't ignore them. Okay. 5% said they are hurtful. And I agree with this, but I just don't think that this is the comment to get into this with because we will get deeper into that response. Five percent or one person said, I live under a rock. (laughs) One person said, if you're late talking relationship wise it depends friendship wise they treat me well also depends oh okay so in terms of relationship wise it depends on the guy and friendship wise guys treat me well okay so 
yeah, guys could be great guy friends, but when it comes to actual relationships, they could kind of treat girls pretty poorly. And I agree. And then one person said, one person said they are fat phobic and treat women badly. Okay, the topic of weight and appearance is very sensitive to girls. It's a very, very sensitive topic. And even when you think you're on the safe side, you're not. Just never, ever comment on a girl's weight. Even if you think it's good, just don't say anything. Even if you, you say something like, oh my goodness, you're you're so skinny. Like even that, <laughs> like either spectrum is insulting. So just never touch that topic with a girl, especially in the dating phases. You know, if you're in a serious relationship and you really feel the need to bring it up, sure, talk about it under the right circumstances but when you're just casually talking to people it could be very hurtful to hear some comments that are made on weight please keep that in mind if there's squeaking it's because i'm trying this different little table that i have on my chair so i could get the microphone up closer to me and it's squeaky anyway moving on this next question was one that was based off of the episodes about the guys survey it reads, a lot of guys seem to want traditional housewives. Where do you stand? I told you guys, you know, you're welcome. I feel like I asked a lot of questions that you guys brought up. Okay, anyway, 60% of the girls said, I want to be a housewife. Some of the guys were complaining that girls don't want that. So I feel like it's most of you guys are misinterpreting some things. 13% said, I'm not a feminist, but career is my priority. And listen, some girls are pursuing careers that are more smarticle particle kind of careers. I have a few friends that are like this. And even though they are pursuing pretty ambitious careers, having talked to them, they said that when they have kids, career will be second place. Like, they're, they're doing this as, like, a help for their family, something to do until they meet their husband, something to fall back on. And, and a lot of them, even if they are pursuing more difficult careers, actually, when you talk to them, the work-life balance that they are planning on, they will actually have a better work-life balance than a lot of girls that are choosing careers that required less schooling so just keep that in mind one person said i'm not opposed to being a housewife but considering the time i spent towards a degree i would like to have somewhat of a career and then the next person said i would love to be a housewife but i don't mind working honestly i feel like that's most girls today in the church they would love to be a housewife but if they need to work they'll work they're not going to just sit around and wait for Prince Charming to come, especially when guys in the Romanian community are not making moves. <laughs> what do you guys want us to do? Knit? We would have our whole house would be knitted by now if we were doing that because none of you guys are making moves. So what do you expect the girls to do? We're going to be... Listen, there is no guarantee that one day you guys will get it together. If you complain that there are no housewives, we have a right to complain that there are no guys pursuing us to take care of us financially. Where are you? If you're not doing that, then stop complaining. <laughs> Girl's gotta take care of herself if the man doesn't. Next, family and part-time would work. That's true, sometimes you can balance it. There are certain careers that are really easy to balance. Um, and it doesn't really require either or. And then the next person said, I'm focused on building my career, but if I will be needed at home to raise my kids in a godly way. I'm willing to sacrifice and be a stay-at-home mom. I think most girls would sacrifice that in an instant because our tendency as women is to nurture. Have you ever seen a girl react to another girl crying or to a child falling? It's just an instinct that kicks in. It's human nature for us to do that. So just think about that. Don't use that as an excuse for the girl sucks so I'm not going to make a move. I think you're not making a move because you're too scared to make a move, not because of the girls. Because I feel like if you did make moves, you would realize the girls are not what you set them out to be in your mind sometimes. 
So, yeah. Next question. How many... <laughs> I need to get um, in the zone for this one. It's about to get real, okay? How many times have you felt like a guy has led you on only to leave you high and dry? Um, y'all watching this, if any guys are watching this, you know who you are. You guys know what you do. You guys, I think when a guy leads a girl on, he knows exactly what he's doing. Shame on y'all. <laughs> the responses were all over the place and I don't know why this didn't show me a pie chart. This showed me a graph. Oh, it's because it was a blank response. I don't see. I wish I did a graph because it, this graph is hard to read. So I'll just read them individually. Okay. One person sends, said zero. Congratulations. You're probably on the younger spectrum of this survey. And I hope you never have to experience that. Next. One person said two. One person said two. One person said three. One person said a couple times, but it was mostly flirting, nothing serious, so the non-commitment wasn't an issue. Okay. You're nice. One person said a lot. Another person said at least three times. Another girl said every time I felt serious about a guy or even just gave attention, they seemed to reciprocate only to get a girlfriend soon after that. Don't pretend. That's all I'm going to say. Don't pretend. If you don't like a girl, it's better for you not to pretend than to act all like ooh, and then leave her hanging and that's why he's called i have not met a guy that led me on only to just leave me high and dry oh baby i hope you never have to next never i shut most guys out i'm confused about this response um, I feel like this needs a little intervention break, commercial break for everyone else, but intervention break for this person. Why are you shutting guys out? Have you been hurt? But it says never, so I don't know. I don't know what to make of this. If somebody who wrote this like genuinely means that, figure out why that's happening to you. Um, Maybe there's some kind of healing that needs to happen there, or you just need to be brave and you know you can never deal with feelings by shutting them off because they're only gonna explode one day okay there were three people who said once quite a few times girl quite a few times unfortunately mm -hmm. there was only one time but i've learned to move on good for you too many A few times. Do you guys see this? Do you guys see what is happening here? The trend? Um, and by the way, my rule of thumb is... Okay, if somebody gets a first date, that means that there is some level of interest. Potential. If there is potential, I give people three strikes. I give people three dates. Three chances to prove themselves to me. And if this is long distance, that means three phone calls. Because texting is not enough. Talking at church after church is not enough. Like three dates. And if it's long distance phone calls. Because it usually takes that long, that many times of seeing someone for them to start being unnervous enough to show their true selves. So if you were interested in a girl and then you went on one date and then you're like, bye, because she accidentally hiccuped during your date give people three chances to really show themselves there's something about those three interactions that really helps you to see like there's an onion and you peel the first layer but that layer only comes off after three interactions trust me three 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 but what i want to say to all this like there are so many girls that have been hurt, not just once, but multiple times, like, led on. And then you guys wonder why so many girls are jaded. 
It's probably because they're sick of this happening to them. And by the way, this stems from this behavior where guys are treating us like we're disposable. Comes from that whole little symbolism thing that I like to do with the ice cream samples. Because there are so many girls that you guys don't really take dates seriously. But for us girls, where guys, especially in the Pentecostal community, in the Christian remaining community, don't really step up, don't really make moves. So... For us, a date is like, we take it seriously, most of us. So when you don't, when you treat it so lightly and like, yeah, I had a, I had a great time with you. I had, I had, but I just don't feel like going out with you. I don't know why. I don't know why, but I just don't feel like going out again. Like, do you guys realize how that's not normal? Have you ever talked to our parents' generation where the man really had to win the girl over and convince her? And now guys are doing the absolute bare minimum. And girls, by the way, don't beat yourselves up if you're not being pursued the way that you always pictured when you were younger. When you would hear stories of your parents and how they met and your aunts and your uncles and how they had to romance them. Because now we're living in a different time where the tables are churned and there's a lot more girls than guys. And so guys kind of get lazy. And I'm going to say that. I don't really care who gets offended. I know probably some of the guys that took the survey or watch the guy version of the survey are gonna watch this and it's gonna offend you guys and i'm okay with that because i offended so many girls in the other version so now it's your turn for some harsh honesty you guys are getting lazy and pursuing girls like not even buying girls flowers not even opening the door not even being intentional not even calling dates a date i'm done with that like if a guy doesn't call a date a date and just like hey want to hang out Today, at two, sorry, too late notice. I don't have time for this because I could already tell you're a flake. Or, oh yeah, hey, um, let's just try it out. I'm not I'm not committed, but like, I just want to kind of like chit chat. I don't have time for chit chat, okay? At this age, after all this experience, I know what I'm looking for. I know what ticks my boxes. If I'm giving a guy a chance, that means he's already ticked some boxes. And if I don't see intentionality, you're out. I don't have time for people that are still playing games, still flirting around, pursuing girls that are really young if you really want girls that are young then leave me alone don't just waste my time i'm not a little girl for you to waste my time and i don't get excited about your little dms and your little messages maybe that would have excited me when i was 16 but it's over a decade from little dm games and little talking phases and pen pals we're over it and the, what guys don't realize is they think their act will last forever and their little tricks will last forever. But it gets old real fast. And it's so easy to spot it. Now, after so many experiences, I could tell when a guy's going to waste my time. And so I don't even bother anymore. I, I, don't, I don't fall for the hot and cold game anymore. I don't fall for... And these girls don't fall for that anymore. Because... Just liking us, just telling us we're pretty, just hanging out with us and then not really following up. Those were things that worked on us when we were naive and when we didn't know what was going on and when we would get excited about a crush. We're beyond that level, okay? Most of us are really ready to get married and start a family. So we're ready for husband material, not for guys that are just looking for the roller coasters of emotions and for the next girl to like give them butterflies in their stomach. The butterflies are going to fade. No matter who you married, you can marry a model and the butterflies will fade. And what I found is that a lot of guys are chasing those Hollywood butterflies that you get first few weeks of a crush. And then once those fade, they disappear into the fog. And I honestly... I used to be really angry at guys like that, but now I just pity them because they're going to have a really difficult marriages because they're going to expect those butterflies to last. They're going to rush into a marriage when they feel the butterflies the most. And then once those butterflies fade, they're going to think they married the wrong girl. Um, and I think it's also a lack of accountability because guys don't talk about this stuff. So nobody's there telling them like to smack them across the head a little bit and be like, Muy payatole. that's not what love is. And if you're confused what love is, I normally would not recommend an author from a denomination that I disagree with. But one good book about this is The Meaning of Marriage by Tim Keller. 
talks about the honeymoon phase and how that fades. Those sparks fade over time. So you better choose well, not choose based off of some sparks and not run away as soon as the sparks fade because you might be kicking a wonderful girl to the curb just because you got used to her liking you or you feel like you've already won her over so there's no challenge anymore listen if you're still in that phase where you're just chasing a girl for the challenge you're not ready for marriage you'll learn your lesson but it might be too late by the time you learn it the good girls might be gone out of your life that kind of stuck around and waited for you to get it together and then they just got tired so they moved on in life guys get away with this behavior and they think that it doesn't impact them but it does and girls learn like fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me sometimes it's like fool me three times or more but then it's like we are never gonna fall for that trap again (laughs) um so yeah the next question in the guy survey i asked is the way that girls dress in your community an issue so i was like what is the guy version of this so i wrote is the way that guys talk in your community an issue 40% of girls said they should watch their language and jokes a bit. Where was that Sunday school song? Deep in your crevices of your memory. Because this does seem to be an issue. And don't talk one way with... Like, of course you're going to be more funny around your guy friends. But are you being borderline vulgar? Are you making inappropriate jokes? Sometimes I see guys making inappropriate jokes in front of girls. And they think we don't catch on. And it's like they're... That's a turn off and that builds your reputation fast. This is one of the fastest ways to ruin your reputation with the girls. Like it's not funny. We expected a little bit maturing by now. Okay, next. 35% they're doing okay. Okay, some of you guys are fine on this. <laughs> One person said, they don't talk. They're just shy. Some guys are really shy. And hey, if you're shy, that's fine. But it's okay. Like, you can talk. Or, like, what are you afraid of saying? You know, just talk. Like, we want to hear you talk. Don't be afraid. Don't be nervous. Like I said in the guy version of this girls love it when guys get nervous around them so don't be so afraid oh one person said from the overflow of the heart the mouth speaks and for some men it shows one person said 50 50 one person said they treat women like objects and only talk about looks yikes don't do that you're building a reputation next yes especially in the romanian community Oof. You know, actually most guys in my life, I will comment on this, are fine with this. Most guys, they're fine with this. At least from what I observe. Um, some guys kind of make some, like very few. And I've already commented on that. But for most guys, they're fine. So I guess it also depends on you, where you're from, the guys you hang out with. But if you do have an issue with this, let this be your sign to just quit it. It's time to grow up. It's time to mature because the girls take note of this. Some of the biggest turnoffs for me and red flags were some words that slipped out talking to some guys. Like I remember one time I really liked a guy and I was hanging out with like a group and then he said one word like it just slipped out and I seriously went home and I cried because... I was like, guys, just don't live up to the godly standards. There is a certain level that you should be like, this is like bare minimum. Your language is like the bare, it's like us wearing a mini skirt. It's like me saying, oh, wow, you're really going to be offended by that. Yes, it's offensive. And it shows deeper things. Like if you can't even do the bare minimum, we're here waiting for men to be spiritual leaders. And yet they can't even get their language together. That is like first grade stuff. There's a time to mature. Out of their mouth comes both blessings and curses. And it's like, how can that be? 
out of the abundance of the heart that person spoke really well all right the next one says overall what do you think the guys need to work on again this was the same question as the girls except for the options the multiple choice options were different 25 percent said not being so prideful yes some guys are really prideful and it shows and it's like some guys are prideful for the most random things like not even things that yeah like, are were like if you're gonna be prideful at least be prideful of some kind of accomplishment but some guys are really prideful of, like their last name or like their volleyball status okay next the way they date not being able to commit 25 percent of girls said that that's what i would have chosen if i took this survey i think the way the guys treat the girls kind of it's like have you guys never had a conversation with your mom like has she never given you how to treat a girl 101 talk or did you guys just zone out when that conversation was happening um <laughs> i feel like i'm being so negative it's a big issue <laughs> um so yeah all right 15 percent said they aren't prioritizing christ in their life and just focused on fun too much and you know like i said in the other episodes it's okay to have fun but also prioritize godliness and prioritize being a godly man it goes a long way okay next five percent said their doctrinal beliefs are too extreme. And I put this option here because I feel like Romanian guys fall into two categories. They fall either really to the left or really to the right. Really charismatic or really reformed. And maybe that's more of a West Coast issue, but like doctrines here tend to be super polarized. And it's kind of hard to find a guy that just kind of believes the same thing most of us Pentecostal girls do that's hard to deal with when you're trying to build a future with someone you're going to want to be on the same page with the things that really matter it doesn't matter if you have everything else in line it doesn't matter if you watch your language and you're a gentleman and you know how to treat girls because if the doctrine is too extreme listen most girls are going to have an issue with it and at the end of the day that's going to be really hard to work out so you're going to get really far but then that is going to be the ultimate end to whatever progress you made i don't want to comment on this too much but just i hope that god gives you wisdom on your doctrine and your i mean you're supposed to be the spiritual leaders so i hope you're not influenced by really popular like preachers um that a lot of guys tend to look up to just because they give them manly feelings or you know whatever one person said maybe be more confident being rejected is better than not trying that person's right because at least you don't have to wonder what if i tried would things have turned out different i'd rather be rejected than to be like oh my whole life i've played it too safe and i never tried so what if that person i really liked would have actually really liked me just as much and it would have worked out i'd rather know the answer to that than never even try to begin with wouldn't you okay the next person said keeping their eyes on jesus and asking for holy spirit's guidance sometimes it seems guys talk to so many girls i wonder if they've surrendered their search to the lord i talked about this i had an episode at like towards the beginning of my podcast it was called things girls wish guys knew or things church girls wish guys knew and i talked about that before making a move like ask god for the green lights don't just chug forward i learned this at a very young age when it was very obvious that the guy the way that guys were proceeding was kind of just like getting really excited and it's great i'm so glad that you're excited and that you actually want to do something about your excitement and do that but also just kind of like say a prayer before you do like god because girls are sensitive with their hearts um so you're about to engage a girl's heart and that's a very sensitive part in her and if you treat that poorly it could go really south for her after meeting you and at the end of the day you don't want to be responsible for that so take it seriously like do try 
but just make sure that God's involved. Thank you guys so much for watching so far. I hope you're enjoying this episode. I unfortunately have to cut it off here because this episode is way too long. This video will be split. There is a lot of good stuff coming up and make sure that you stay tuned next Wednesday when I post part two of this video.